All right, so guys, sorry about that. I'm still figuring all this out. It sounds like somebody just got a code on Twitter and decided that they just wanted to be a-holes, but we'll keep going. Um, he should share the screen right here um, as we work, so I apologize for that. Everyone should be muted as they enter now, and we're good to go. All right, so take it back over, Steve. All right, we were um, it's not showing up at your screen yet. There now? No, try and exit out of it again. Let me make sure I can I'm on the host. All right, we're trying to get it back up. Somebody, I like presents his comment to you. Great display of poise there. <laughs> Try it again. I mean, that looked like good poise in the pocket. That's exactly right. You got it up yet? I mean, can you see it? I do not. Does everybody else have it? I guess everybody, but I think I got something. It says start screen sharing, but I don't have anything. Everybody else has it. You go on. Uh, everybody else good? Another good thumbs up. All right. So basically, the array philosophy, I'll go back to here where I said, you know, and it's also our coaching philosophy is, you know, I fear not the man who's practiced 10,000 kicks once, but I fear the man who's practiced one kick 10,000 times. And, and uh, really, with in 2017, we had to we had to go to that, um, and more than we ever had before, just because we had least experienced football players, and and it just it it became better for us. Um, and then, as you see, with, you know, increased points scored. Um, I had a first year quarterback in 2017, 2018. I had a quarterback that was a sophomore that broke his wrist five games in and had to play an athlete the rest of the year at quarterback that led us to the playoffs and then obviously 2019 I had my junior quarterback back that that had an unbelievable year but as you can see our points scored increased when we narrowed down our, our air raid offense our total yards increased and then obviously our passing TD uh, increased so uh, these have been my four quarterbacks, Tyler Daniels, Jake Flowers, Clay Matthews, and T.J. Morrow. Um, they were all over 2,000-yard passers. Um, obviously, Clay and, and, and Jake were um, – Clay can run a little bit. Jake did not run at all, where Tyler and, and – um, They've really let our – but. As we move into talking about the stick, um, lucky for me, I went to a, a clinic and, and become friendly with the guy. You you might recognize um, some of these these slides as uh, he was nice enough to let you know share them with me and allow me to edit and share these uh, with you guys. But uh, I really learned the the stick concept from Kyle Richardson. Who was down at Northwestern, down in South Carolina. Uh, won two or three state championships down there, set a bunch of yards, uh, record yards passing. Um, he really made me a believer in the uh, in the stick concept in the air raid offense. Um, it's been a part of our offense uh, the last seven years, but we, we feel like we the last four, we, we've really got really, really good at it. Um, we use it as a quick game. It's an easy throw. Um, we're able to move around athletes and, and get them in space and, and I throw it more out of three by one than, than two by two, um, but I wanted to put that up on the screen for you. Um, we feel like it's a great third down play, but we also feel like it's a great drive over. Um, it's been really successful for us on both those situations. Um, and then what we've started doing the last two years is we've really we've been able to attach it to our run game. So we've been able to attach it to uh, GT, um, 
your, you know, your quarterback, uh, your quarterback HG counter. And then we're also able to tempo um, after a big first down, we're able to use it in tempo with inside zone. So um, again, I like running it more out of trips, um, but uh, you know, teach their own. But I, again, um, these slides, some of them are from Kyle. Um, and I really appreciate uh, what he does. And, and, and he's at Clemson now. Um, and he will um, answer any questions that anybody else has. He's obviously way better at the stick concept than I am, but uh, just lucky to learn from him. So as we move forward, talking about the stick concept in three by one. So for us, the top slide there, that would be early, where your Y is on and he's flexed out. The H is in the middle and your Z is uh, the outside guy. So the way we teach the progression to our quarterback is we're going to read, we're going to read the inside nearest inside linebacker to the Y he's running a four yard hitch, but we're also trying to manipulate the flat, flat player, flat read player. So if, if that guy is more inside the H and closer to the Y, then we feel like, you know, if he sits flat or sits flat or plays the Y, we, we got a great throw there with the H on the out. If we get some type of man coverage, I give my quarterbacks free, free reign. I have a green light to throw the fade. And then obviously the four yard hitch, which you'll see when we, I show you the film has been real successful for us. Now in the, on the screen, it always has the running back away from the trips. What I've allowed our quarterbacks to do is, is have freedom to move that, that running back either side he wants. So, We've had times where, you know, and you'll see on film where, where the, the running back is all, is to the trips. And sometimes that was just game planning because of the defense alignment we got. Sometimes he's away. Sometimes he stands in protects. Sometimes it's a, a two-man route on the, uh, the the back side. But what we've got to do as, as coaches, and, and, and it starts with me, is we have not thrown the backside X cushion throw enough. Um, You'll see on film, I had an inexperienced guy, first year player this year playing X. And even though it, on the band it says run a hitch, you know, he, he was learning football. But what we have found going back to doing studies, especially this spring, is we really got that cushion throw on the backside quite a bit. And it's an easy five yard throw. Um, we do give that guy the, or we give the quarterback the option to look out there and give him slant if it's man coverage. But, you know, we do tell, the quarterback throw that X cushion if all possible. But I think Clay being you know, having only five games in, four games in, you know, his first year and and then this year really trying to get himself settled in the offense, he really looked at going to the trip side and throwing the stick more than he did the cushion. And 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 we coached that up throughout the year and and uh but we obviously we just gotta continue to get better at it and that's what our staff has studied uh this spring, but obviously at the bottom of the screen, it's uh, it's stick to the left. That would be late for us. Um, not sure that that exactly matches up with the um, the air raid family terminology. It's just the terminology that's worked out best for for our program and our kids. But when we go late, it's X is on, Z's in the middle, and 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 H is on the inside. Now most air raid guys, you know, the Y is their dude for us. It was a letter this year. Um, the Y was our guy, um, so I tried to leave him singled up away um, as much as I possibly could, and, and all our stuff in the offense. So um, that's that part of the part of the deal. I'll go on to the next slide. Um, this is the other way we ran um, stick this year. Um, you'll see the slide at the shoot by the Y, but really what we would do is we would put the Z on and put the H and the Y off. And again, we were trying to manipulate that flat read defender. Um, so we were gonna run the four yard hitch at him. We were gonna bubble with the Y or he could run the shoot. We've done it both ways. Again, the Z was gonna be running a, uh, a mandatory release takeoff. Um, is green light for the quarterback if he gets press coverage. Again, it's cushion on the backside with slant or hitch. We teach all our quick game throws. If it's man, we're going to run slants. If it's if we get cushion, we get zone. We're going to run hitches. Um, again, though, in our film study, we we realized we we've got to coach some of these younger kids up better, and uh, but they they were in they were in the space to make plays. Again, at the bottom, um, 
it's it's late running the same play. And then one other way, and I don't have – I think I might have one cut up, but I don't – you know, we all got egos too. So, you know, I kind of put on the cut ups, uh, completions. Uh, but the way a lot of people are running um, slot fake with stick now is, you know, you're going to take your inside guy and your outside guy. They're going to run the four-yard hitches. And then, you you know, your middle guy is going to manipulate the coverage that he gets. And basically, yeah, it's a, it's a drawn straight line on, on the sheet here. Um, but he's going to run to the front pylon. If we're outside the 20-yard line, he's going to run to the back pylon. If we're inside the 20, um, you see this more on on Saturdays. Uh, obviously, Oklahoma's running this quite a bit, um, making a living off of it. Uh, San Francisco 49ers, you, you saw them run a lot of Shanahan when he, he they did run stick. Um, they would run it more this way. And and uh, Early on this summer, we had some success with this in games. I don't think I put our kids in the best situation to to complete this throw. And uh, but it's going to be a, it's going to be something that's going to be a part of our package going forward. That you know this might end up being the way we run stick more um, than the the traditional way. And I'm going to show you some film of that right here. That's what it is, Gabe. Uh, this virtual clinic today. Dark. Yeah, we're going to stay on right now. The what? Uh, Steve Brooks is on right now. All right, so this is our, uh, this is some stick cut ups. I'll rewind it here. Here we are in early. <laughs> Just run that little four yard hitch. Sit down in the grass, catch and throw. Don't have to worry about a whole lot of protection. Quarterback, you know, not gonna take any shots on this play. Yeah, the, the defensive lineman gets through, but you can see how quick Clay gets it out of his hand. Luckily, he's a baseball player. So this was for us, this was a swap. We had a big 6'3 kid we could put in there that we played outside some, but we'd like to throw stick to him. He's got to do a better job of, of driving that kid off and, and, and finding grass, but it's easier to throw, throw to him. And obviously Clay put the running back to the trips, use it as a little play action deal. I, I let the quarterback and running back kind of decide those things. One thing I did tell Clay when he came to the sideline is with, with that little, you know, little bit of show right there that it almost was too late the way that Mike linebacker jumped out there in, in that throwing lane. So probably the, the Z's got to be a little wider. And that's what we coached up later, you know, that, that Monday is he's got to be a little wider and he's got to come off the ball. And, but it's easy throwing to that 6'3 kid. Great hands, does a good job right here. Probably needs to turn out. This is just early for us. Here I didn't put our kids in a great situation. A lot of times, and this might've been off a, a, a tempo deal where we were on the near hash and, and, and stick was, was stick was to the near hash. Again, that's, you know, and I'll put that on me. That's, that's play calling and that, that's not putting our kids in a great situation, but our kids made a great play right here. Um, quarterback found, found our why he sat down in the grass, was able to get six, seven, eight yards. And, but I got to do a better job of, of putting them in a better situation. Now, Clay has got to do a better job of looking off at the, the single over here at the top. He had him on the slant. The safety is over in the middle of the field, got cushioned. And that's all the type of stuff we coached up on Monday trying to get it better. This is – all right, so this is the second um, type of stick 
that we run where the, the middle guy is going to run the stick and we're going to run a bubble with the inside guy. Again, trying to manip manipulate the flat read defender. Do a very good job of – and this is out of late for us. So he's going to run that hitch. He's going to sit down. Flat guy read the uh, bubble. He chased after it. So it's just an easy throw and catch, get up field. And again, that kid, he's a, he's a junior. He's, he's big, tall, and lanky. He's got to learn what to do without the after he gets us the football. But he's getting there. Again, this is just late six. Sorry about the sound. This time, this was a game planning deal. We put the back to the trips and had him run a little swing. Not much to it, just kind of maybe hold that linebacker. Teach their own. You know, we, you know, we're not saying our way is the right way or the wrong way. It's just kind of the way we do things. But again, it's just if you look at the film, a lot of first downs. Um, we felt like this was a great drive opener, great series opener. Get a first down, go tempo. Run stick, just first down, great play call, safe play call on first down, get four or five, sets us up to be able to uh, to have second and second and medium. And with a big running back we had, it allowed us to do different things in the run game from a second and medium standpoint. This is the out, this is throwing the out and the stick. And the stick was taken away. At least the quarterback, felt, Tyler, felt it was taken away. So we throw the out here. Get a first down. Good game. Good. All right, so that's that part. I'm going to move on since we've already uh, used a lot of time and move on and talk to you guys about our Y-Cross concept. So... So just the basic way we, we're going to run Y cross. Um, you know, a lot, I think a lot of people, you know, talk about really what to do. This is ACE for us. Um, a lot of people talk about what to do with that H. You know, I know some people run him on a, a five-yard out. Some people run him on a stick. Um, some people are actually crossing back across the middle of the field. Um, I have seen that on film, but what I have, what I found talking to my buddies that, that coach in the air raid and are a lot better at it than me out West, Patrick Taylor and, and Drew Piscopo is, uh, and they really made me a believer of this play is we're going to stretch that H uh, to run an eight. It's, it's, it's an eight yard, but it turns into a 10 yard out. We're really going to make that outside linebacker um, play grass, make him be an athlete and uh, get out in an area where he's not comfortable playing. But our reads on this is we're going to green light the X on the fade. Um, if he's got press coverage or if our quarterback likes it, he's gonna, we're going to green light that throw. But we're going to read the H on the out to the cross. And, uh, you know, we feel like it's, it's given us a combo play. You know, it's allowed us to have sailed to the front side with cross. Um, and it's allowed us to, to really take down our teaching time and not having to teach two concepts. I used to love the sail route. Uh, probably loved it more than, than any play in the air raid until uh, Coach Taylor really taught me and showed me uh, a much better way to run cross here with, with that 10 yard out. And uh, it, it's allowed us to spend more time on running, running cross different ways than, than having to teach cross and sail. Um, it also, as, I, as I'll go through the different ways that, that we run it, it allowed us to add a shot play with, with slot fade added to it. Um, and it's also given us a full field, a full field read on a play that uh, we feel like is great on any coverage and any down and distance. So 
I'll show you the different ways here or the four main ways that, that we run the Y cross. Um, that was out of ACE. This is what our flipper back would play action. Um, you know, we call it bull, a 95 crook. Um, we're going to fake the power. We run a bunch of power here. Um, we're going to shoot that. We're going to shoot the H out there in the flats with the cross player to fade and then, you know, backside curl dig. We run it out of dart. This is where we run slot fade. You know, we get that off coverage. Um, that corner drops. We know we can come back here late to the hitch. Um, but we feel like this X is – that X sits or the corner sits flat. We can run by this guy. And if the safety cheats, then we've got a great hole shot here with the Y. And then one other way um, – and I got this from Coach Piscopo, and, and, and it might not be exactly how he would run it. Um, but it's out of uh, – out of what we would call early, uh, we found that throwing this this post right here, this slant post, there's a ton of grass here, especially when you send this H on the uh, on a wheel route. I actually got the wheel part from Coach Gieselman. Uh, the way I learned from Coach Piscopo was this guy was going to bubble, um, but Kinston has found a, a lot of success running um, that guy basically through the corner's toes, holding the safety, and it's allowed for a big, huge hole shot um, right here. So that's the four main ways we're, we're going to run it. Um, again, we're not perfect at it. And, and as you see in, in the, in the um, video, um, our running back is not always going to, you know, he's not always going to go opposite of the cross. He's not going to always, um, you know, what the way it's drawn up necessarily. A lot of times, you know, Clay especially felt like he needed extra protection in there with, with our big running back. Um, so he told him to stay in. And I kind of gave those guys that, that freedom to do that. Um, sometimes game planning wise, we, we like, you know, swinging him to where the cross was going to. So here's, uh, you know, here's us running it. We're going to hit the 10 yard out here. Um, got a fade on the outside. This is our sophomore H. Does a great job here running around. This is actually his first varsity catch. It's our athletic director's son. Um, did a heck of a job for us this season. Um, runs a great route. And as you see, that, that, that linebacker doesn't want to get out there, can't get out there in that area. Tyler's a great athlete. Made a great throw and catch. Had great protection. Obviously did a little flash play fake in there with that big running back we got that kind of made everybody kind of sit a little bit longer. Allowed Tyler to get open and and again, we had we had a great play. As you see, we had the cross going in behind it with the curl. Probably could have banged the cross there as well. But our when we took our first read, is throw that out and move on to the next play. Here's this again hitting the out. Or I'm sorry, this is uh, Clay throwing the fade ball. Had the out if he wanted it through the fade at the back of the end zone for a score touchdown. Cross was probably there, could have been there, but uh, he saw something he liked and saw that uh, he had the corner beat. Corner kind of sat flat, came up flat on that uh, on the out and uh, made a great throw right there. Here's us hitting the out again. Play really became comfortable hitting that, throwing that play, throwing that out. We got to do a better job, make sure at X we're running that guy off to the back pylon. Again, here, we, this team here liked to bring blitz. They were way more athletic than we are. So it was another reason we left our running back in there to help with extra protection. Even though happily, luckily on that play, we didn't have to, uh, he really didn't have to hit anybody. This is us running cross the other way. This was slot fade to the top with us running cross back to the right, which I know a lot of the true air raid guys don't run Run it both ways. We do. At times, it just depends on, you know, our personnel. But again, this is our sophomore H. 
catching the ball across the middle against uh, a conference opponent. Does a great job of finding grass, getting open. There's so much emphasis on our Y right here running the slot fade. It kind of opened up the whole middle of the field. Nobody saw Tyler kind of going across right there. Here's us hitting the cross against a, a conference opponent, J.H. Rose. You know how athletic and, and great they are, especially on defense from year to year. We were running slot fade down here to the bottom. Had any of those, we had to, you know, we could have come back right there to the hitch. Clay knew it, had his crosser for a big game. Steve, about two or three minutes, and then we're going to question. Okay. This, uh, this is the post that we hit for like a 60 yard touchdown. Got it early. Our Y got caught up there getting the cross. We were able to hit that uh, the outside guy on that post. This is the uh, the play action with the H back. We hit the cross across the middle of the field for the touchdown. Touchdown. All right, got a couple questions for you. Um, you know, philosophy on getting the ball out quick on some of your hots, like if you had to throw that ball against Blitz right there, um, you know, or are the Ys, the Y looking for the ball a little bit quicker on Y cross if he sees Sam Mike coming? Um, you know, I know Stick's kind of a quick game concept, but what are you doing to get the ball out quick, you know, via screen game or anything like that? Yeah, I mean, if, if, he, if they got blitz coming to that Y, he knows he's he's just tightening it down. He's just going to run a quick slant in there, and, and quarterback needs to bang him. I mean, that's uh, you know, that's his own protection and things like that. So that's what we talk to them about. Um, also, if if we feel like if we're going to get if we get blitz to um, where the to the side where the guys run the out, you know, we we talk to him about running just a hitch. And that's all, you know, we, we, we call that from the sideline or, or it's game planned or, you know, we have the way we number our wide receivers one through five across the board. We can add any type of tag if, if we see that blitz coming and, and, and just give a code word. Good answer. Uh, Coach Norwood asked, I think this is going back to stick. Do you teach the four-yard hit on the stick route to turn in or work out away from an inside backer? We've always taught it to turn in. That's just it, – it's just simpler for our kids. Um, if we felt like that that backer was creeping more, um, what we've had to do as coaches is, is we need to widen that wide receiver out. Um, but we've always taught him to turn in. Anybody else got any questions for Steve? Um, real quick, I can unmute it. Um, if you've got any uh, – sorry, I'm still figuring this thing out. Please, uh, yeah. Go ahead and ask. These last two slides. Yeah, I got um, the bill right here. In front. Um, obviously, this is – I've learned more, you know, being a head coach than I ever thought I would learn. And I've worked for some great men. But um, I really believe that this is what, you know, football has come down to is, you know, a coach will impact more young people in a year and the average – or in a year than the average person does in a lifetime. And, um, I've got some great relationships, obviously, with my coaches, my players. Um, just the you know the way we do things at ACOC is is unique, and we have to to be different than than a lot of you guys because of what we've had to uh, to uh, endure. But uh, things are changing at ACOC. We've got uh, 
Um, feel like things are going to be uh, moving in the right direction. Like I said, I work for a great AD, and uh, I know he set us up to be uh, to to have things be done the right way. And I'm just fortunate enough to be where I'm at. And and then this last slide is uh, just you know my email at school. And then my cell phone number, if anybody's got uh, any other questions, best I can do to, to answer them. Like I said, I don't have all the answers. This is my first clinic of, of actually doing this stuff. And, and it might not be perfect. It's just the way we've got to do it and the way we are doing it. And um, as a coach, that's, I'm, I'm thankful for Coach Hickman and, and all you coaches that are, that are putting stuff out on, on Twitter and social media and obviously allowing, you know, coaches like me to, to contact you and, and ask questions and, and, and because I, I, I want more answers. I want more details of how to do this stuff and, and how to be better at it. And, and uh, I had to learn it, you know, I had to learn. I couldn't afford to go to Tony Franklin at $3,000. So I had to buy stuff on the, the backdoor market and the videos and things like that and, and go to clinics. And um, But I know there's a lot of great air raid guys, especially, you know, starting to work their way east. And, and there's a lot in the – you know, western part of the state, I said Patrick Taylor, Drew Piscopo, Coach Singleton um, out there at Asheville, uh, Coach Corthorpe uh, doing the 92 mesh group, There's and Coach Salas, obviously. But there's so many great air raid guys out there, um, you know, that, that are open to answering questions. And um, just thankful I got opp opportunity to do this. And uh, thank you guys for listening. I had one more question, Steve, come in. Um, how much are you repping Y Cross coming to the left? Going left to right? Yeah. Uh, not – I didn't do it much this year. We ran it just – we only ran it that one way where you saw it on video where I could run slot fade because of that Y was our dude. Uh, <laughs> but most years it's always from uh, right to left. All right. Sounds good. All right. So, guys, next up is going to be the offensive coordinator at Louisiana Tech, uh, Joe Sloan, who is a Richmond, Virginia native, um, played while I was a GA at East Carolina. Um, so, Joe, the code for that, I'll post it again on Twitter if you need it, is going to be 984-974-418, 984-974-418, and it'll be posted on Twitter. Uh, thank you, Coach Brooks. Hope to see you guys in the next session. Yes, sir. Thank you, guys.